Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the coordinates, uh, finding the coordinates of the non-stationary points of inflection for y equals 2x minus 3 to the 5, take away 2x minus 3 to the 4. So this one uh, is going to use the chain rule. So if you haven't met the chain rule for differentiation yet, ignore this video. Okay, move on to the next one. Um, the next video in this block of four um, won't use the chain rule and is suitable for first year differentiation techniques. Okay, but this one's for a traditionally second year. Okay. So let's see this. We're going to first of all find dy by dx. Okay, so differentiating each of these pieces using the chain rule. So we've got the 5 coming down the front, we've got the 2 coming out to the front as well. So we've got 10, 2x minus 3 to the 4. And then differentiating this term, we've got the 4 and the 2 coming out to the front. So minus 8, 2x minus 3 cubed. Okay, so we're going to want to find um, the stationary points for this. Okay, so putting dy by dx equal to zero, we want to solve this equation. Okay, equals zero. Right, so uh, we'd want to divide through by two uh, to start off with, so I'm going to reduce it down to that to start off with. Okay, I would show an extra line of working if I was doing this in the exam. Okay, so I wouldn't just abbreviate immediately. Um, so I'm going to factor out the 2x minus 3 cubed, and I'd be left with 5 lots of 2x minus 3. Uh, take away 4 is 0. So I've got 2x minus 3 cubed, and I've got 10x, and I've got fi minus 15 take away 4, so minus 19 is 0, and so x is either 3 halves from that bracket, or x is 19 tenths from that bracket. They are the two stationary points, okay? So I now want to find the second derivative. So I've got the 4 coming out and the 2, so that'd be 80, 2x minus 3 cubed. I've got the 2 and the 3 coming out, so 6, lots of 8s and minus 48, 2x minus 3, and take 1 from the power. OK, so now I want to put the second derivative equal to 0. So we've got 80, lots of 2x minus 3 cubed, take away 48, 2x minus 3 squared is 0. I'd want to divide through by... Um, what would it be? 16? I could divide through by 8, I could divide through by 2 after that. So uh, dividing through by 16, I would get 5 there, and I would get 3 there. Once again, I'd write a new line if I was doing this in the exam. Right, now I can factor out the 2x minus 3 squared, and I'd have 5 lots of 2x minus 3 Take away 3 is 0, so 2x minus 3 squared, I've got 10x there, I've got minus 15, take away 3, so minus 18 is 0. So either x is 3 halves, or x is 18 tenths, which is uh, 9 fifths. Now clearly, now here, right, x is 3 halves and x is 9 fifths are possible non-stationary points of inflection. However, I know from this stage that x is 3 halves is actually a stationary point. And so that is not going to give me a non-stationary point of inflection. So the only possible one is x is 9 fifths. So I'm going to have to look either side of the second derivative, either side of that point in the second derivative, to see if we've got a change in sign from convex to concave, or vice versa. OK. So, uh, 9 fifths, 1.8. So let's look at 1.7 and 1.9. And we're going to substitute these points into the second derivative. Right. 
So we've got 80 lots of two lots of 1.7 take away 3 cubed. Uh, take away 48 lots of two lots of 1.7 take away 3 squared. And we get minus 64 over 25, so that's negative. All right, now I need to substitute in minus one, uh, sorry, positive 1.9. And we get 256 over 25, so that's positive. So we're going from negative to positive, so concave to convex. And so we definitely have that change in sign. So x is 9 fifths is definitely a non-stationary point of inflection. And so substituting 9 fifths into the original equation to the power of 5, take away 2 lots of 9 fifths, take away 3 to the power of 4, and we get minus 162 over 3,125. Okay, and that is the non-stationary point of inflection for that curve.